What's going on, everybody? Welcome that's it, to that's it. another Almost Home. Super another grateful one. to have each and every one of you participating yes, sir. tonight. Whether you're watching this live or you're watching this via the replay, I'm believing blessings will fall down on your house. Blessings will fall down in your kitchen, come your on, living room, on. your bedroom, your bathroom. If come you're on. in the car, <laughs> if you want to walk with the family, however you're tuning in live or the come replay, on. get ready for the miracle to get take ready. place in your life. My name that's is Daryl, and I am privilege to be one of your hosts joined with my brother from another mother austin Humphreys. how you doing austin what's going on Doc, you, i'm feeling good man almost home listen man yeah. we we are in man is it night seven night seven night doc seven. we have been we have been moving before i get into anything else i'm fine but me and daryl we want to hear how you're doing get into yes. the comment section listen rep your church rep your city rep where you're from listen this is the day the lord has made we ought to rejoice and be glad yes, and so right sir. now let us know where you're from. Rep your church. It's good to see so many people. Anthony, I see you. What's yep. going on? Cynthia, I see you. What's Penny, up, I see you. Linda, I see you. Come on into the virtual space. Listen, we're almost at 400. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Let people know that you're here. We're excited to have you here today. I know we've been we've been doing it all week long, Daryl, the last seven days. But listen, we cannot we we cannot say it enough. We need you to register. So go ahead and text yeah. 404-737-0672 to register. For almost home. Daryl, can you tell the people why they got to register, man? Listen, man, good things come to those who register. That's right. <laughs> good things come to those who register. We giving away cash money, right? We we are just trying to stay in touch with you. We're not spammy at all, right? But if you register, you could be eligible to win cash money prizes each and every night as a matter of fact tonight we're giving away fifty dollars you know what That's i mean it. so listen you got to make sure you register if you want to be eligible to win uh and when you register please 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 fill out all of the information there uh so that you can receive the prize if you are chosen tonight and listen if this is your first night watching with us we want to give you a special shout out if this is your first night watching with us the almost home revival can you just type me in the chat go ahead and type me right now yeah, if this I is your that. first yeah. time uh, worshiping with us virtually tonight so we can give you a very special shout out tonight listen for those who text me tonight we're glad that you type me we're glad that you're here we want to welcome you listen don't worry if it's your first night you've got a slew of sermons a slew of series that you can kind of go back and watch so don't be afraid to go back and catch some of the previous messages god has been so good to us what's Pastor, up nicole man, I, I, how you doing let me let me nicole, just give her a shout out yeah, nicole yeah, do it, do it. uh kathy ann small Good to How have you, you in the building. Good to have you in the building today. We're, we're glad to have you here. Pat Harley, we see you watching, watching. Thank you so much. Uh, we're grateful to have you guys here in the virtual space, man. Pastor, uh, uh, welcomes to all the me's in the chat. Yeah, that's that. what's going on, Pastor Shelton. Pastor, we have something to be grateful for before we bring on our, our fantastic president of, of our field, Elder Winston. Man, yeah. we've got over 15 baptisms, Doc. Come on, who, man. People who have committed themselves to the Lord. Can, can y'all just this put virtual the, chat, advisor. The, the clap emoji in the chat right now? Yes, sir. For those yes, individuals sir. getting baptized? Come on, y'all give awesome. it up for it's them right awesome. now. It's awesome. We're grateful. We're grateful that they could be a part. We're so thankful that you all are here and who have welcomed us. Who have welcomed us into your homes. But we praise God for those who have taken the time out to say, you know what? What must I do? And we're so thankful for that. But listen, Pastor, we're, we're grateful to have the pastor of our field, Edward Winston, give us a welcome at this time. Good evening and good afternoon and maybe even good morning to some of you, depending upon where you are in the world. It is Again, my privilege to welcome you to our evangelistic series, Almost Home. And it has been nothing short of marvelous and amazing. And we thank you for all of the comments that you have sent in on the chat each night and uh, emails and information, phone calls we have gotten from you just, just thanking us and telling us how you in much you enjoy this. It has really been good. It has been a blessing, not, not just... Uh, uh, an entertaining portion. It has been a soul searching of our lives and our relationship with Jesus Christ. So thank you to Pastor Snell and, and all of the team that, that stands behind and supports him. Thank you to all of the musicians and thank you for tuning in. Uh, some of you have been with us live every night. Some of you have, have seen it on rebroadcast, but we know that the numbers who have joined us for this occasion has been in the thousands, and we thank you. And thank you for inviting your neighbors and your friends and your family. Uh, we look to see a harvest of souls for the Lord, and he's already doing it. So welcome. 
We thank you. Thank you to our hosts. They've done a marvelous job. And thank you again for being here. May God richly bless us and our efforts so that one day we can be home, not just almost home, but we can be home and hear him say, well done, good and faithful servants. Thank you for being here. Have a good day and a good evening. Goodbye. Listen, thank you so much, Elder Winston, for that warm welcome. Absolutely. Man, Daryl, uh, he said it best, man. We, we've had an awesome time so far. Yeah. We've had not only those watch, watching virtually, but, but Pastor, we've had some watch parties, man. We've had oh, some. Man. We've had some. We've had some wonderful watch. Man, come off mute so we can hear you, man. But we, we've had some dope watch parties. Phenomenal it's, it's watch been incredible. party. It's been incredible. Let's see if we can get some of those pictures up on screen one more time, just for those who've watched. Man, again, Monty Newbell, sh shouting out your church, man. Praise God for you all out there in North Carolina doing a fantastic job in that area, man. But also we're having a few. Well, look at this, man. Those look at who that. Are out come on, in man. The neighborhood. Can, who are I want to be at that pitch. watch party right there. <laughs> oh, come on, man. It's, we, we got an awesome watch party, man. So thank you to all those who are watching, those who are not just watching uh, uh, at your homes on the TV, but you're at church. For those of you who are outside, yeah. big shout out to you guys. But listen, man, I, I I love the fact that we as hosts can come together and be a part. All of us, man, the, God has blessed us. And I'm excited tonight to bring on another host with us, man. He's here in the background, ready to go. We're excited to have Pastor Victor Bartley uh, here with us in the virtual space. Pastor Bartley, man. Hey. Good to see you, Doc. How you feeling, man? Well, man, up, man, it's inc it's incredible to be here with you two distinguished gentlemen and preachers of righteousness. It's it's incredible the experience that we've been that we've been seeing virtually. Uh, oh man, it's just been awesome. It's just been awesome. It's great to be on the space with you all. Listen, I'm I'm excited to be here, and we know that we're not just blessed by by uh, of the sermon so far and the, and the chance for the talk. But man, Pastor. Pastor uh, Daryl, Pastor Vic, man, we, we've had some awesome music, Doc. We, awesome, we, incredible we music. have been blessed yeah. uh, by music, and tonight's no different. We're excited to have with us. She's no stranger to the almost home space. We're glad to have with us tonight Shalana King to come and bless us now for our first song selection. His son not sparing, send him to die. I scarce can take it in. Then on that cross, a burden's gladly buried. He bled and died just to take away.
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. How great thou art. How great thou art. Thank you so much, Minister oh, Shimana. Chin my Chin for God. That awesome and incredible gift incredible. Uh, and message and song. Come on, if you were blessed by that song, can you just type blessed in the chat right now? Come on, man. I know yeah. I'm about to be blessed tonight. The nearly 700 of us who are watching live right oh, now. Oh, absolutely. Be blessed absolutely. by the preach word. But if you were blessed oh, by yeah. that message and song, go ahead and type blessed in the chat. Vic, hey, even listen, since you aren't on since you aren't on the mic at home, you go ahead and just create an atmosphere of praise to the king for that. There you go. There but, you go. It, oh, just incredible. The, 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 the she took us to the throne room with yeah. the reminder of simply how great thou art. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Listen, guys, yeah. we are super grateful that you all have been rocking with us, man, these last no several days with the Almost Home Revival. We have had some Almost. tremendous organizations that we have partnered with, right? Listen, because of your gifts, we have been able to be a blessing to so many people across North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. And I don't yeah. want you to stop right now. So many people have been blessed because of your donations, because of your giving. And I want to bring forth Pastor Josh Nelson at this time. And, and he's going to give us an opportunity to send our love gifts, large or small, to people who need your help. Josh, Absolutely. man, what's going on? Who are we partnering with today? Listen, listen, I am live right now. Feels good. Hey, yeah. Dr. <laughs> Nelson. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. But man, listen, man, we, we've just been seeing God do some amazing things. Um, you know, when you think about the fact that we're giving to different charities, different organizations that are doing extraordinary work across our field, you know, we have to remember as church members, we are in the community, right? So we have to bless our community and these people are doing some amazing work. And so and before I get into that, I just want to just give a shout just to God and just the Holy Spirit, what he's been doing just in Albany and in Blakely. You know, we had a watch party. You know, we first started out, uh, you know, was it last week? And let me tell you, man, we had a good time. God blessed, uh, you know, in, in, in Albany and in Blakely. And the spirit has been, just been drawing people. Uh, we have people lined up ready to get baptized. And uh, I wanted to share. Yeah, man, God is good, man. I want to share yeah. about my friend. I, I, listen, I just met him a few weeks ago. His name is Bakari Bryant. And this brother brought him and his wife, came to the church, man. They said the Holy Spirit just led them to the truth of the Sabbath, man. Wow. And they've been confirmed through the preaching of Pastor Snell 
and they, uh, you know, uh, Bakari yeah, last was it, a couple of days ago. He was like, "Yo, man, I gotta get baptized." <laughs> so we're just praising the Lord for what God is doing. And I just want to encourage everyone out there to keep on going, keep on doing the watch parties, keep on going. We've been doing a thing called Afterglows. After each um, service, we get on a Zoom and we just do Afterglows. We kind of just reflect and talk about what's happened in the uh, in the meeting. So just encourage everybody. But listen, man, we have another group that we're pushing again tonight. We are c- celebrating what God is doing in an amazing group that's doing amazing work down in Southwest Georgia and Albany, Georgia here, a better way grocers. And you've heard me talk about it for a number of nights, but I want to just push them again because tonight we're trying to raise $300 for them tonight. And that's a small amount. That's a small amount. I, I praise God for what you all already done throughout the other nights. But tonight we have a goal. <laughs> we have a goal. We have a cash app now. This e- everybody has cash app. It's an easy way to do it. But we're mm-hmm. really um, trying to push this because we know that food deserts, Food insecurity is a real thing, especially here in Georgia. And so this group has devised this amazing ministry where they are pulling, cities are pulling uh, grocery stores out of this area that desperately need food. You have children who are hungry, going to school hungry, but we have this organization, Better Way Grocers, who has built this food truck in a sense, this bus that literally drives around with fresh produce and has freezers and whatnot with a whole bunch of food in there. And they're going into neighborhoods, y'all, going into neighborhoods and giving out food to people who need it. This is like the best model I've seen in terms of just solving this problem right there on the spot. So we're just encouraging you guys today to dig deep. Go ahead and and get your phone out right now. Don't delay and cash app so we can give to this amazing ministry, uh, Better Way Grocers with the Terrells. And so, yeah, I can go on and on, man, but I just want to tell y'all, man, they're doing some amazing work. We've been seeing God do some amazing things with just health ministries in Albany, Georgia. Um, some of y'all heard about the plant-based restaurant we started. And we're doing some amazing things. And so we want you to contribute to what God is doing in Georgia. Outstanding, man. Listen, uh, and, amazing. And there are just two things that I heard you say, Vic. I don't know if you caught this, but individuals are giving or rededicating their lives to the Lord. Uh, and uh, we have awesome. ministries that are actually going out into communities, making sure that food as an issue is off the table. How awesome is that, bro? Ah oh, man, it's simply incredible. The, the the reality is that ministry must meet needs, right? And so th- to hear that uh, that it's doing that on both fronts, the spiritual and the physical needs, uh, is is simply incredible. And and South Atlantic family, those that are joining us abroad, you have the opportunity to do that tonight. You you heard Dr. Nelson. You know what the number is. You know what the number is. You know the Cash App. You know how to use it now. Give. Let's do this thing. Let's make it happen. Let's continue to support the ministry. Uh, and, and, and we want to, as you're doing that, as you're doing that, we want you to do it with a smile on your face because you know that that your funds, the things that you're that you're giving are being used in order to benefit those that need groceries in their refrigerator, uh, that, that need supplies and need produce, uh, that, that need sustenance for their body. And so we know how it is. The saying goes that you aren't yourself when you're hungry. Yeah. Um, and so we, we, we definitely we definitely want to make sure that we're doing that tonight. Yeah. And as you said, uh, Pastor Palmas, the, the the decisions that are being made for Christ. Oh, man, it's just awesome to, to see how the gospel is still going forth and the decisions that are being made is nothing short of the spirit being at work. Absolutely, man. Listen. So listen, listen, guys, watch this. The goal is three hundred dollars tonight. I know out of uh, more than seven hundred and fifty people, we actually have seven hundred and eighty nine people watching live right now. Right. If we all gave 50 cents, we would reach our goal. But I know there's one person right now that can just go ahead and sow that seed of three hundred dollars to help someone have food on their table tonight. So already over a hundred. Already, listen, don't let this night pass. Don't let this opportunity pass without you sowing your seed. Listen, with That's God, right. we can. And with you, we will. We want to bring forth Minister Shalana Chin King to, at this time. She's going to bless us with another awesome and incredible message in song. And right after that musical celebration, that number in song, we are going to be blessed by none other than the one who has been blazing <laughs> the word of God. Like bringing oh my, oh my, and every night at the Almost Home Revival, I want to That's introduce it. to some after the music and present to others, Pastor Dr. Debbie Air Snell. Come on, like, share, let's get this word. We are almost home. Almost.
Hallelujah and amen. I don't know about you, but I, I love the Lord and it is true. I, I want to just say a word of appreciation to Minister King for being such a powerful vessel for the glory of the Lord tonight. 
Um, listen, if you've been blessed tonight, let's just give her a hearty amen. If you're in a church building or just give her an amen right there in the virtual space. Uh, listen, Sister King, when you record the CD, I want you to know I'm going to be one of the first ones to, to buy it. You, you are a great steward of God's gift. And we pray that God will continue to use him, use you to lift up his holy name. Friends of mine, I'm excited to be back here with you once again, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And I just want to thank all of the saints there in South Atlantic uh, for continuing to be with us all weekend long. We were together Friday, twice on Sabbath, again yesterday on Sunday, and we're here again tonight. I know that South Atlantic Conference loves the Lord uh, because you're willing to continue to come together in his name. Uh, listen, friends of mine, I want to just, again, say a word of appreciation to the leadership there in South Atlantic Conference. Thankful for President uh, Bill Winston for his uh, dedication to growing the body of Christ, to making every possible resource and tool available to make sure that we can get further cemented in the truth of the word of God. And then I want to thank my good friend, Pastor Preston for the invitation and for just facilitating uh, this opportunity to share the word of God and to all of the great pastors and workers. You all have such a tremendous team of preachers and, and leaders and creative minds that allow the gospel of Jesus Christ to be pushed forward. And friends of mine, I want you to know that we're not going to be together on tomorrow night. Monday, uh, Tuesday night is going to be an off night, but guess what? We'll be coming back together on Wednesday night. Now I want you to know this week is going to be Wellness Wednesday. And what we're going to be doing specifically at the end of the service Wednesday. We're going to be praying specifically. We're going to be praying for divine intervention. We're going to be praying miraculous healing over anybody that is infirmed, anybody that is sick. Listen, anybody you know that's dealing with, can't, anybody that's dealing with any illness, got a surgery, heart issue, whatever it is, make sure that they plan to call in on Wednesday night. We're going to be praying divine healing, miraculous intervention for God's people at the conclusion of the message on this coming Wednesday, this wellness Wednesday. So do me a favor, man. Listen, if you got anybody in your sphere of influence that's dealing with any kind of health challenge, you need to make sure that they are watching Wednesday's service. Make sure that they're watching Wednesday's service. And so friends of mine, we want to go ahead and jump right into the word of God tonight. Again, tonight's message is really, really critical. I'm going to do my best to kind of slow it down, contain my excitement, because there's some principles I need to teach. And I'm praying that they would settle into the heart, because there's some things that you need to hear tonight that are going to help alter or adjust your perspective. Hopefully you're able to see the goodness of God in a new light. And my prayer for somebody tonight is that you would have greater clarity, perhaps as to why some things have unfolded in your life in such an unfair way. Why things have happened in such a difficult and unfair way. And so tonight we're going to begin as we do each and every evening with our revival covenant. If you're in a group, let's say it together in unison. Or if you're by yourself, still go ahead and say it out loud. I believe that you have to decree something before you can see something. So let's say it together. Tonight, I make my decision about eternity permanent. I consciously choose the eternal over the temporary. My body may be on earth, but my mind is in heaven. My loyalty is in heaven. My investments are in heaven. And my love is for heaven. Today, I put those things from the past behind and I reach forward to those things that are ahead. I refuse to quit. I refuse to get tired. I will not be wearied, defeated, discouraged, distracted, or deceived. I've got too much to lose and even more to gain. My mind is made up. I won't turn back. I'm clothed with determination. I'm closer than I've ever been. Thank God Almighty that I am almost home. Thank God, friends, we are almost home. So do me a favor real quick, real quick. I need you to be a digital disciple, an electronic evangelist, man, and an internet intercessor. I need you to be an Apple apostle. Listen, man, just if you're on YouTube, just share the link, copy the link, text it to somebody. Send it directly to somebody that needs to know uh, why certain things have happened in their their lives in the way that it did. Or if you're on Facebook, just hit the share button. If you're in a house and you got a spouse, you got kids, you got people that you can kind of move in one direction or the other, 
and they're on the phone or they're watching television or they're outside. Listen, family, heads of household, get these kids in front of this, this, this screen so that they can receive the word of the living God. Listen, the Bible says train up a child in the way that they should go. We ought not make spiritual things optional uh, while academic things are required or athletic things are required. Listen, listen, I'm going to give you some time to go ahead and do that. Do that. There's some things we need to do as a family, as a unit. So do me a favor. Let's go in the Bible to uh, the book of Job, the book of Job, chapter one, the book of Job, chapter one. And we're going to begin together at verse number six, Job, chapter one. And we're going to begin together at verse number six. When you get there, uh, just say amen in the chat. The book of Job, uh, kind of there in the center of the Old Testament, Job, chapter one. And we're going to look together at verse number six. We're not going to read it all. But uh, again, we'll, we'll, we'll reference a number of scripture verses throughout the teaching tonight on the screen. Job chapter one and verse number six. The Bible says, when you have it, say amen. Then, then one day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came with them. The Lord said unto Satan, where have you come from? And Satan answered the Lord from roaming throughout the earth from going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? That there is none on earth like him. He is a blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Then Satan asked, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not placed a hedge around him and his household and everything that he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And then the Lord said to Satan, very well, then everything he has is in your power. But on the man himself, do not lay a finger. Then the Bible says "Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Tonight, saints, I want to talk to you for a little while under the subject behind enemy lines. I want to talk to you tonight about the fact, friends of mine, that we are behind enemy lines. Let's pray together. Father, I just ask that once again, in this little while that you would say much, Lord, I'm praying that every snare, every temptation, every effort of the enemy to drive a wedge between uh, God's people and God himself, I pray that those weapons would be exposed. I pray that his power would be broken and that somebody would be able to see God's grace in a whole new light. So, Lord, once again, would you please hide me in the shadows of the cross, that Jesus alone might be seen, that Christ alone would be heard, and at the end of our time together, may Jesus alone be praised. May faith be multiplied exponentially in the hearing of the scriptures tonight, we pray. In the wonderful name of Jesus, who is the Christ, let God's people say together, amen and amen. Again, friends of mine, we're talking to you tonight under the subject behind enemy lines. Uh, there, there's an interesting quote, my friends, that says, even folk that don't believe in God, they believe in the devil. And, and the reason I think that's hilarious is because no matter how logical a person is, no matter how linear you are in your thinking, there is all of us that, that are able to recognize that there is an agency at work in the world that is evil. So that even if we don't believe that there is a God who is good, we recognize that there is a force in the world that is evil. And one of the things about evil is that evil is palpable. It is dense. It, it stands out in the human economy. So the fact is that there are times where we can recognize evil in other people. There are times where we see, feel evil in the atmosphere if you're honest tonight, there are times where you can recognize that there is evil working even in your own heart. And, and see, the reason, friends of mine, we can recognize evil more than we can recognize good, the reason we recognize Satan better than we recognize God, is that evil many times is visible when oftentimes God's goodness is sometimes invisible. The reason we recognize Satan is that his, wep his, his works can be seen with the eyes where sometimes God chooses to allow us to operate by faith and he operates in the background. And sometimes the reason we're able to recognize the presence of evil is because evil leaves a scar. 
The works of evil leave a wound. The works of evil are visible. And the reason we recognize evil is because we recognize those things that wound us more than we recognize those things that bring us wellness. Let me say that again. We can identify things that bring us wounds more than we recognize those things that make us well. And that's why, friends of mine, we talked about on last Wednesday, why it is important for us to praise God so that we can remember the God that makes us well more than we just remember those things that bring us wounds. And so tonight, I want to talk to you for a little while about why it is important for you to understand that there is a devil. There, it, it is critical that you understand that there is an enemy that is against you, that wars against your well-being. The first reason you need to recognize that there is a devil, number one, is that if you don't understand that there is a devil or an enemy, what will happen is you will fight the wrong battle. The Bible says that we ought to put on the whole armor of God, that you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And notice that the Bible says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Our, your battle is never against human beings or human powers, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. In other words, friends of mine, I need you to understand tonight that if the scales could be removed from our eyes and you could look into the spiritual world the same way you look into the physical world, I need you to know that you would see dark agencies licensed by the Satan, Satan swooping in with murderous intent. And at the same time, you would see the angels of God that excel in strength and in might that stand up on our behalf and keep the weapons formed against us from prospering. And the thing I need somebody to get tonight and let those that have wisdom hear what is being said, I need you to know that even though there's some people that come for you, even when you don't sin for them, even though there's some folk that get on your last nerves, there's some people that have hurt you in a myriad of ways and have left scars that kind of make you bleed on the inside. I need you to understand that that person is not your enemy. In other words, I need you to know that Satan works through human vehicles, but your problem is not with the vehicle. Your problem is with the driver. Let me say that again. Satan works through human vehicles. But your problem is not the vehicle. Your enemy is actually the driver. In other words, I need you to understand that your enemy is not the boss on your job. It is not the co-worker that slandered your name. It is not the ex-spouse that took half. It's not your baby mama or your baby daddy. It is not the bully around the block. I need you to understand that your greatest enemy is not of this world, but he simply works through human vehicles to discourage and bring despair to the soul. In fact, I remember not long ago, I was driving down the street and there was there was a car accident where where somebody's vehicle T-boned the person that was in front of me and the person that once he was hit, when he got out of the car, he didn't go beat on the hood of the car. He didn't go and kick the tires. He didn't go and curse the front bumper. What he did was he aimed all his ire and disgust at the person that was driving the car. In other words, even though it was the car that did the damage. It was the car that produced the dents. He realized that the issue was not the vehicle being driven. His issue was with the one that was doing the driving. And what I'm saying with somebody tonight is you've got to stop focusing on the vehicles and you've got to aim your frustration at the one who's driving. And I need somebody to understand because even if you got revenge on the vehicle, even if you got revenge on the person that harmed you, even if you were to take down the person that injured you, even if you were to get back at the person that did you wrong, all the enemy is going to do is find another vehicle. And that's why you can never focus on the persons you can see. You've got to fight with spiritual weapons against the enemy that you cannot see. The second reason you got to understand that there is an enemy is that if you don't, you will subscribe to a life of randomness. I need you to know that the Bible says in John chapter 10 that the thief cometh not but to steal and kill and to destroy. 
But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. See, I need you to understand, friends of mine, that your life is not just been random. I need somebody that has grown up and has had to endure a series of inequities where it just seems like the universe or the forces of life have been against you from the time that you were a child. I need somebody to know that you are not unlucky. Your life has not been cursed. You are not just on the wrong side of a cosmic equation. I need you to know it's not because you've been forgotten by God, but the Bible literally says that the thief cometh for one purpose. It is to steal and to kill and to destroy. And see, the thing I need you to understand, beloved, that your value is not just seen in your assets, but your value is seen in your attacks. Oh, I pray that it sinks in on somebody tonight, that your value is not just seen in your assets, but your value is seen in your attacks. In other words, a thief never breaks into a home where he does not perceive there to be something of value. In other words, he, he ain't going to break into the homeless shelter. He is not going to break into an abandoned warehouse. He is going to break in to steal and destroy in a place where there are assets that are worth fighting for. And I need somebody to be able to reframe all of the tribulations of your life. I need you to understand the reason the enemy has sent waves of despair from the time you were a child is because God has put assets inside of you. He has gifted you. He has set you apart. He has ordained you for something unique. And the reason the enemy had to attack you young is because he knows that if you ever got in the hands of Christ, he knows that if you ever got free, he knows that if you ever connected with your creator, he knows that if you ever realize your purpose, that those assets and gifts are so great that you would be a fierce warrior against the kingdom of darkness. And so I want you to look at your tribulations. I want you to look at your trials. I want you to look at your hurts and realize that it is simply a sign of, 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 of the gifts and a sign and evidence that God has a great work for you to do. And the third reason you need to recognize that there is a devil is that Satan wants you to blame God for everything that has happened to you. I told you on night two that just like those who produce the tabloids, they're good at slander and manipulation. They'll put one person's head on somebody else's body as a, an attempt to mar their image. Their goal is to mar your perception of that person. Their goal is to make you see them in a different light so that you never see them as they are supposed to be. And I need you to know that one of Satan's greatest traits, my friends, is to take his work and put God's name on it so that you begin to curse and stand at variance against the name and the power of God. But the good news I want somebody to know tonight is that even though we are up against a fierce enemy, I need somebody to know that Satan is defeated. Somebody ought to shout amen today. In other words, we ought not walk around busted and disgusted. We ought not walk around intimidated and defeated because the Bible says in Revelation 12 and verse 12, 12, therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell therein, but woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. In other words, friends of mine, I need you to know that even the devil knows that he is defeated. Now, I just need God's people to know he is defeated. In other words, the devil knows he is on the losing team. He knows that his fate is sealed. He knows that his cause cannot be revived. His only objective left is to take as many of us down and with him as he possibly can. And I need somebody to make it up in their mind tonight to know that, okay, devil, your fate is sealed. But guess what? I can still make a choice. Your fate is already decided. But like I told you last night, for the living, there is still hope. For you, there is no hope. But tonight, if you make the Lord your choice, I need you to know that you can have a different outcome. Can the church say amen tonight? 
And so real quick, I want to just uh, make a short left turn right here. And I want to turn your attention to the story of Job. Where, where you see behind the veil just a little bit and you begin to see what the great controversy or this battle between Christ and Satan is actually all about. You see, the reason this is very critical is because it puts in perspective why it is that God's people deal with difficulty. It's an amazing story where the Bible says Satan goes before the presence of uh, some, some of the angels go to present themselves before God. And the Bible says that Satan, who is a fallen or discredited angel, comes along with him. And God says to Satan, Satan, from where have you come and, and why have you appeared today? He says, I've been come roaming to and forth upon the earth. And I need you to know that essentially Satan is making a boast. He's saying everybody I have tempted has decided with me that the worth were earth has aligned with my values, that there is no one on earth that has not succumbed to my temptations or my suggestions. In other words, he makes a boast to God that essentially the earth is under my dominion. And then notice that God says, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan makes an offer. He says, listen, you bless the work of his hands. You place a hedge around his family. But if you take away Job's things, if you lessen his transactions, guess what? Job will begin to curse you to your face. And what happens is God gives Satan permission to take away Job's things, to take away his children, to take away his home, to take away his oxen, to even take away his children. And yet there was still the belief or conviction that Job would not waver in his conviction to God. And there's some things that God wants us to know from this story. And I'm going to talk about them quickly tonight. First thing that God wants us to understand from the story of Job is that bad things happen to good people. Now, the reason this is critical is because the prosperity preachers tell you that if you just sow a seed and, and if you just buy this and if you serve the Lord, that every day is going to be harvest, breakthrough and deliverance. But I need you to understand, friends of mine, that the Bible does not say all who live godly in Christ Jesus will be rich and never have a worry and never have a sorrow and never have a sickness. But the Bible says all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. In fact, one of the things that Jesus told his disciples is that in this world, you shall have tribulation. In fact, if you read Psalm chapter 37 and verse 18, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers them from them all. And the reason I want somebody to understand this tonight is because some of us believe that somehow serving God is not worth it, that somehow God has fallen short of his promise because when we begin to serve God, all of our troubles did not go away. But I need you to understand that serving God doesn't make you exempt from trouble, but serving God guarantees trouble. Sometimes serving God is going to multiply some trouble. Sometimes serving God is going to, to actually is actually going to enhance your trouble because once you begin serving God, you get on the bad side of the enemy who wants to disrupt or destroy your faith. And I need somebody to understand that the witness of faith, friends of mine, it is not that God keeps you from every trouble. It is that God keeps you in every trouble. In other words, the witness of faith is not in what you avoid. The witness of faith, like Job can testify, is what you survive. In other words, faith is not authenticated by how smooth your life is. Faith is authenticated when you go to the very brink of hell and yet you're able to come back and tell the story with your faith intact. In fact, let me tell you what faith is like. Faith, friends of mine, is like one of those bounce back toys. I don't know if any of you remember those bounce back toys growing up where when you hit the toy, it would bounce back up. And no matter how many times you hit it, it would still bounce back up. In fact, the toy was constructed in such a way that with the more force you hit it, the faster it would jump back up. The harder you hit it, the faster it would bounce back up. In fact, the more you hit it with force, the more it would come back with resilience and strike you. But the reason these dolls were always able to bounce back is you'll 
notice that they were weighted on the bottom. And because they were weighted on the bottom and the center, no matter how many times you knock them down, they would always spring back up. And I just need to know, are there any saints that have some bounce back in your spirit? Is there anybody that's weighted on the inside with the word? And because you're weighted with the word, it doesn't matter how many times the devil hits you, you're able to bounce back up. In fact, when you've been walking with God a little while, the harder he hits you, the more you bounce back. The, with the more force he hits you, the greater your testimony becomes. The more the trials, the more you profess his name. In other words, if the devil had good sense, he would actually leave you alone. But how many of us have gone through some trials and yet you bounce back? You've lost some jobs and yet you've bounced back. You've seen some loved ones die and yet you've bounced back. Your kids have miscarried, but yet you've bounced back. There have been troubles on your job and yet you bounce back. And your bounce back is not because there is this super resilience on you, but it's because the word of God is weighted in you. In other words, the witness of faith is not what you avoid. It is what you survive. The second reason, second thing that the story of Job teaches us, friends of mine, is that sometimes trouble is a compliment. Now, I need you to notice something about the story of Job. Did you notice, friends of mine, that Satan did not ask for Job? I need you to recognize that Job <laughs> was recommended by God. Mm. In other words, I need you to understand that sometimes trouble is a compliment. In other words, sometimes in your workplace or sometimes in your family, sometimes in your sphere of influence, there is a time where God needs a witness. He needs somebody that is going to authenticate the journey of faith. He needs somebody that lets the world know that my walk with God, it is not just about blessings that I receive. It is not just about the car that I drive or the house that I live in or, or the things that I wear. Sometimes God needs somebody through their testimony that says just serving God is enough. He needs somebody that can testify that the relationship is why I'm here. He needs somebody that can say that the blessings are just ice cream on top of the cake. He needs somebody that can say that, that the car is just an enhancement. He needs somebody that can testify that the house is just a bonus. But the reason I'm here is not for the things. The reason I'm here is for the relationship. So that even if the things shift, even when circumstance comes and go. I'm still anchored in the relationship. And I need somebody to understand, beloved, that adversity is just the other side of promotion. And guess what? If he can't trust you with adversity, then guess what? My God cannot trust you with promotion. Because I need you to understand that there are two sides of the same coin. In other words, God cannot promote you if he cannot trust you. And I need you to know that the trust is not seen just in how well you handle abundance, but trust is validated and how well you handle seasons of drought how you handle seasons of lack, how you handle seasons of deficit. And I need you to know that he cannot promote you if he cannot trust you. Are you hearing me tonight? The third thing you need to understand about the story of Job is that everything that happens to you is not about you. See, I need you to understand that this battle, friends of mine, it is not against you and the devil. Mm. So I need you to know that you're not a peer, that you're not a rival, that you're not a true nemesis. I need you to know that the actual battle is actually between Christ and Satan. But I need you to be clear on the fact that Christ is superior. Somebody ought to shout, Christ is greater, that our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is higher than any other. How great is our God? 
But I need you to know that Satan understands that he cannot come for Jesus. I need you to know that the Bible says that even dimbo demons believe and they tremble. In fact, even when Jesus walked here on the earth and he walked up upon a man with a legion of evil spirits or devils inside of him, I need you to know that the Bible says that the man in whom the devils were, they came and worshiped at the feet of Jesus. In other words, even the devil knows that he is no match. But I need you to understand that the only way that he can get at the father is to try to separate him from the children. The only way he can hurt the father is to try to destroy and debase and devalue and to separate those that are created in the image of the father. And I need you to understand that the only way he can hurt him is by trying to disrupt you. So what happens to you sometimes is not really aimed at you. That spear is actually aimed at God. Are y'all hearing me tonight? And the fourth thing I need you to understand is that your sense, the fourth thing you learn from the story of Job is that your sense of God's worth must be relational and not transactional. The Bible makes it clear when you read Job chapter one, that Satan lays hand on all of Job's oxen and Satan is able to take away all of Job's sheep and Satan is able to take away all of his finances and Satan even is able to take the life of his children. But I need you to understand the point of the story of Job. The Bible says then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell to the ground. And the Bible says that Job worship. The Bible says that he said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I shall return there. He says the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible says that when he lost his house, that Job worshiped, that when he lost his oxen, he still worshiped. When Job lost his financial well-being, he still worshiped. Even when the life of his children were taken away, the Bible says that Job tore his clothes. He shaved his head and he began to bless and exalt and praise and worship the name of our great God. But friends of mine, please don't miss the point of the story because too often when we read the story of Job, what we try to do is compare ourselves to Job. We, we wonder in our minds, if I could endure what Job endured, could I handle what Job handled? Understand that is not the story of the purpose, story, purpose of the story of Job. The purpose of Job is not to try to figure out if you can handle what he handled because Job passed that test. You won't be called to endure that particular test. But, but again, the star of the story of Job is not Job because the story is not about Job's patience. It is not about Job's endurance. It is not about Job's fortitude. The primary motif is not about a man who endures much. What the primary moral of the story is about a God that is so great a God that he loves so much. The story is about a God that is so awesome that even when all of his earthly possessions are taken away, the star is about a God that even when my life is turned upside down, the moral of the story is that even when this life takes you to hell and back, that there is still a God that is worthy when everything on earth turns against you. In other words, what you ought to ask is not what made Job so strong. What you ought to ask is who is this God that is so great that even when he feels like that God turns against him, he is still willing to serve him. And I need somebody to understand, friends of mine, what the battle is all about. I was listening to a foolish gospel song that said the devil is trying to take away your car and the devil's trying to take away my house and the devil's trying to take away my stuff. No, the devil ain't after your car because he ain't driving. The devil ain't after your house because he don't live in buildings. He ain't after your clothes or your jewelry because he don't put on Tommy Hilfiger or, or Nike or Dolce and Gabbana. I need you to know he's not after your stuff. He's simply trying to get you connected to your stuff 
because if your faith is connected to your stuff, if he takes away your stuff, then guess what? He can take away your faith. But if your identity is connected to stuff, if your joy is connected to stuff, if your sense of worth is connected to stuff, all you've got to do is manipulate your stuff, then guess what? He can secure your faith. He can confiscate your joy. He can confiscate your peace. But how many of us know that if our joy is in the Lord, if your peace is in the Lord, if your hope is in the Lord, if your identity is in the Lord, then no matter what comes, no matter what goes, no matter who affirms and no matter who hates on you, no matter what receive is received and no matter what is repossessed, guess what? Can't nothing take away my joy and nothing can take away my peace and nothing can take away my faith because my hope is in the Lord on Christ, the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand. Can the redeemed say amen tonight? In other words, friends of mine, I want to talk to you about who Satan is, what his qualifications are, and how we can stand against his wiles before I take my seat or before I end this message tonight. So the question then becomes, where did Satan come from? Where did Satan come from? I need you to understand, friends of mine, that you cannot believe what it is that you've seen on television. I need to be clear on the fact that Satan is not a hideous monster or beast. He is not a man walking around in a tight red suit with a pitchfork who is operating in a place of burning. I need you to know that Satan is not hanging around, around in hell's fire. In fact, Matthew 24 says that hell's fire has been prepared to destroy the devil and his angels. But I need somebody to be clear on the fact that Satan, as I stated earlier, is a fallen or discredited angel whose former name was Lucifer. Somebody write that down, Lucifer. Ezekiel 28 and verse 12 tells us of his origins. The Bible says, thus saith the Lord God of the enemy, that you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom. And the Bible says that he was perfect in beauty. He says, you were in Eden, the garden of God, and every precious stone was your covering. You are the anointed cherub. The word cherub simply means angel who covers. You are on the holy mountain of God. The Bible says you walked in the midst of the fiery stones. In other words, friends of mine, I need you to know that Lucifer was the chief cherubim. He was the covering or leading angel, the leader of the angelic host. The Bible says that every precious stone was his covering. The Bible lets us know that he had more drip than any of the contemporary uh, rappers in our time, that he was full of wisdom and that he was the, the perfect in beauty. In fact, Ezekiel 28 and verse 12 says that you are perfect in your ways from the day you were created. Until the Bible says iniquity was found in you. The Bible says your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You were corrupted by, you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. In other words, friends of mine, I need you to understand that the Bible says that Lucifer was exalted. That Lucifer had status. That Lucifer had power. That Lucifer, basically outside of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that he was the most powerful of all of the created beings. But I want you to understand the reason the enemy wants to keep you from a relationship built upon authentic worship is because the whole issue between Christ and Satan revolved around the issue of worship or who was worthy. The Bible lets us know that Lucifer got to a place that he was not content to worship. He reached a high-minded, arrogant place where he desired to be worshiped. Isaiah 14 and verse 12 says, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down, the Bible says, to the ground. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. He says, I will be like the most high. In other words, Lucifer reached to a place where he was no longer okay giving the glory, but he wanted to receive the glory. Lucifer was no longer content to give praise, but Lucifer wanted to receive praise. And I need you to understand that there's a formula for spiritual derailment. Notice he says, I will ascend and I will exalt and I will be like the most high. Like the old preacher said, the problem with Lucifer is that he had bad eyes. 
In other words, friends of mine, one of the things that causes us to be derailed spiritually is the sin of pride. It is a sin of self-sufficiency. When we reach that place of spiritual autonomy, where we no longer function with a sense of need for God, but we feel like we can operate independent of God, or we begin to put ourselves in the very place of God. And the Bible literally lets us know that he was corrupted by the gifts that were given him. He was corrupted by reason of his beauty. And see, the one thing that Lucifer fundamentally forgot is that everything he has and everything he was given belongs to God. And see, one of the reasons, again, we ought to live a state of worship, the reason we ought to give praise, the reason we give glory, the reason we honor God in worship, it is to remind us that all that we have, all that we are, it is because of God. I need somebody to understand, friends of mine, that no matter how gifted you are, I need you to know that the gifts were given to you by God. It is the message of stewardship that says, I don't own anything. I simply manage what God places under my possession. In other words, I need you to know that if you're pretty young man or young woman, or you're handsome young brother, or you fine young lady, I need you to know, don't get corrupted by it, that even your looks were given by God. If you were sing, sick and sing, you ought not be high minded because it is your gift that comes from God. Even if you work hard and you say, man, I work hard for my money. I need you to know that the ability to work hard comes from God. The Bible says in him, I live and move and have my being. You got a bunch of degrees behind your name. But how many of you know that it was God that gave you the intellectual acumen to be able to pass the classes and secure the degree? I need you to know that the Bible says it is God that gives the power to get wealth. And I just need to know, is there anybody that just wants to have a little praise break with me right now? You just want to just give God some glory. You just want to acknowledge that it all comes to him. You just want to say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, you recognize that it is God that supplies all of your needs according to his riches and glory. See, I need you to know that worship is simply a practice of stewardship. It is simply an acknowledgement that it all comes from God, that your house, it came from God, your car, it came from God, your possessions come from God, your health comes from God, that everything you have is a result of God's open hand that is extended to his children. Are you hearing me tonight, saints? And so then the question today becomes, is how effective was Satan's rebellion? I need you to know that Lucifer was so powerful and so persuasive that the Bible lets us know in the book of Revelation that there were some in heaven, that there are angels that actually sided with him. The Bible says, and another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great and fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. And the Bible says his tail through a, drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to earth. And the Bible says, now be clear on the symbols here. I need you to know that the dragon represents Satan and that the stars represent the angels. And the Bible says, and war broke out in heaven. Michael or Jesus and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought against them. The Bible says, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found in heaven for them any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole earth. The Bible says he was cast out. And the Bible says, my friends, that his angels were cast out with him. In other words, friends of mine, I need you to know that Lucifer is the personification of sophistication, that he speaks with a sophistry and a persuasive power. He moves with subtle force and all of his wiles are covert. He knows how to plant seed and make suggestion. He makes freedom look like bondage. And he literally leads one third of the holy angels in a revolt against God. 
So whenever you see a there are here talk about a demon, I need you to know that a demon is not a monster. Do not believe what you see on movies like The Exorcism that Lucifer and his his demonic forces that they are hideous beasts with claws and tails and and fangs. I need you to know that the Bible lets us know that they can even transform themselves into angels of light. But I need you to know again, love it, that again the good news is that even though they go in war against the enemy that they are defeated. But then the question then becomes, and this is why I need you to get, the, the question then becomes, why didn't God just destroy Lucifer? Why did he allow him to tempt Adam and Eve in the garden? Why did he permit him to let sin enter into the world so that we live now under this curse? Why didn't he just smack him down? Why does he not just destroy him on the spot? Why does he even allow this yeast to begin to impact our lives? There are three reasons real quick. The first reason he does not destroy Lucifer is that God created us with the power of choice. I need you to understand, friends of mine, that when God created Adam and Eve, he created us and the angels as free moral agents. In other words, friends of mine, God did not create robots. He did not create autons who only do certain prescribed methods. I need you to understand that we serve a God that gave us free will with the ability to accept him or reject him. In other words, friends of mine, I need you to understand that the ultimate demonstration of God's love is that he gives us the power of choice. In other words, friends of mine, I need you to get that what makes God great is that he gives us the opportunity to accept or reject. He gives us the opportunity to be on his side or be against him. And I need you to understand that choice is the anomaly in the cosmic con uh, conversation because it is the power of choice that makes God great, but yet it was the free will or power of choice that made it possible for us to live in a world where there is sin and death and destruction. The second reason that God did not destroy Lucifer is that God desires worship that is out of love and not out of fear. In other words, Satan went around and what he said to the other angels, he planted this seed that God is arbitrary, that God is unfair, that God cannot be trusted. In other words, I need you to know what he did was tabloid journalism, where he manipulated their perception of God. What he called into question was God's fairness, his equity, and whether or not God could be trusted. And if God vengefully just makes an example of Lucifer by simply destroying him, what he does is he creates a martyr. And what happens is they begin, the other angels serve him temporarily out of fear. But one of the things that we told you earlier, friends of mine, is that God wants a relationship with all creation that is voluntary. He wants a relationship that is an acceptance of an invitation. He wants worship that is not commanded. He wants worship that is not coerced. He wants worship that functions out of a heart that is smitten by love as opposed to a heart that is manipulated by fear. The only place where you have love and fear, the only place where you have love that is demanded is where there is domestic violence. But as I told you earlier that we do not serve an abusive God, we don't serve a coercive God. We don't serve a manipulating God, but we serve a God that says his perfect love is going to cast out all fear. And the third reason, and this is the most critical, the reason he could not destroy Lucifer right away is that we, along with the angels, literally had to see the ugliness of sin. In other words, if he destroys Lucifer, the question about whether or not God could be trusted or whether or not his ways were just, that question would begin to multiply. It would have a lingering residue. It would always echo in the memories, even of those that did not necessarily consent to sin. In other words, sin had to run its full course. The price of transgression, which is death, needed to be revealed. And Satan had to be revealed as the liar and the murderer that he is. In other words, friends of mine, I need you to know that even when we get home, 
The prophet Nahum in Nahum 1.9 says that affliction or the curse will not rise a second time. But the reason the curse will not rise a second time, it is not because the power of choice will be taken away. The reason affliction will not rise a second time is because those of us who have been redeemed and have made it over to the other side, we have lived the horror of the curse. We have tasted the, 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 the taste of the curse. We have borne the scars of this curse. And the reason that affliction will not arise a second time is that the angels that had, did not fall have looked upon human history with strange curiosity and with lamentations because they have had to live and see what sin does, that sin brought curse. That sin brought racism, that sin brought strife, that cancer is the result of sin, and lupus is the result of sin, and war is the result of sin, and separation is the result of sin. And the reason that we ain't having that on the other side, the reason we ain't going back the other way that we came is because we've seen it up close and personal that the curse of sin is not theoretical, it is not conceptual, it has been our lived reality. And when we get to the other side, Side, friends of mine, that we'll be able to sing a song that the angels cannot sing. It is the song of Moses and the Lamb. And the reason that angels cannot sing this song is because they have not been through what we've been through. They have not gone through the journey of redemption. They have not tasted the sorrow of death. They've not experienced a, a thing of separation. And the reason they can't sing this song, we got some notes that even the, the cherubim that can sing multiple parts, they can cannot hit. They can't hit those notes because those notes come from an experience. It is the experience of those that are just so glad to transition from this earth to the next, that have transitioned from death to life, that have gone from bondage to freedom, those that have gone from the curse to everlasting blessing with the Lord. It is why affliction will not rise a second time because we have seen the ugliness of sin and we can confirm throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity and throughout the hollows of an unfallen glory that his judgments are just that his ways are true, that his ways are righteous, and that everything God does is perfect. Can the church say amen tonight? So we need to know, friends of mine, as we maneuver through this fallen world, what are some of Satan's capabilities? I need you to know that Satan has power over the elements. I need you to understand why it is that there is sorrow over this earth. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, when you were dead in trespasses, in which you once walked following after the course of this world, following, the Bible says, the prince of the power of the air. When you look down at John 14 and verse 30, notice how Jesus refers to Satan. He says, hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, but he has nothing in me. I need you to understand, when Adam and Eve were created, the Bible says that he gave Adam dominion over the earth to dress it and keep it. But I need you to understand that when he aligned himself with the serpent by or disobeying God and partaking of the fruit, what happened is he forfeited dominion that was supposed to be over unto us. And he forfeited that dominion and placed it under the rule of Satan. And so I need you to understand that Satan is referred to as the prince of the air or the elements or the prince of this world. Now, I need you to understand that we don't have to be afraid of the prince because God is still the king. But I need you to understand something powerful that as the one who controls and has limited dominion over the affairs and the elements of the earth, that the enemy is literally able to spin himself into a cyclone and bring about tornadoes that bring about destruction and death. The enemy is able to mix hot air with cool air on the ocean front and send hurricanes up the coastal sides of the Carolinas. Our enemy is able to stab at fault lines in the earth and cause it to shake and tremble, causing harm upon God's people. And it's amazing. Have you ever noticed that these acts, hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes and so-called wildfires. Have you ever noticed that these things are referred to as acts of God? Have you ever noticed that he tries to put God's name on his work? 
those things that harm, those things that destroy, those things that bring despair. We have lived under the deception that these things are the works or, or the doings or the plottings of God. So we say coronavirus is the work of God and SARS is a work of God and earthquake is a hand of God and fires are the hand of God. But I need you not to point your ire and your frustration at God. You've got to take out your frustration and recognize who the enemy is because if you don't know who your enemy is you don't know what side you ought to be on oh if you don't know who your enemy is you don't know whose side you ought to be on and see the problem is if these are acts of god what happens is i look upon god with fear I look upon God with trepidation. I look upon God with anxiety. I believe that God is the reason I suffer and have sorrow and I have harm. But you got to recognize that there is an enemy that works against the well-being and the prosperity of God's children. Second thing that Satan does is he, he tempts you to do the wrong thing. See, one of the things that the enemy does is he is able to make bondage look like freedom. He said, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, that everyone who sins is a slave of sin. Friends of mine, I need you to understand one of the greatest traits of the enemy is to make freedom look like bondage and bondage look like freedom. So the enemy is able to get us ensnared with all manner of wickedness. And he does these things, making you think that when you do certain things, you're liberating yourself, that you're having a good time, that you're living the best that this life can give. But the best thing the enemy does, does is he makes freedoms look like bondage and bottom bondage look like freedom. I need you to know that he's simply trying to make you a puppet. See, I need y'all to understand something, Frank, saints. I need you to understand how freedom works. Because see, there are some of us that reject spiritual things or religion because you feel like it's oppressing you, that it's bringing you into bondage, that it's going to take away your joy. See, I need somebody to get this, friends. And I'm going to repeat this again on Wednesday. Freedom, my friends, is not the ability to drink or smoke. Freedom is when I can do and go about my day and get peace without anything chemical. See, see, freedom it, see, 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 the enemy wants you to see it this way. See, bondage is not when I don't drink. Bondage is when you have to drink. Mm, let me say it again. Bondage is not me choosing not to smoke. Bondage is when you've got to smoke to make it to the end of the day. Bondage is not refusing or rejecting pornography. Bondage is when you get to the place where you can only be aroused through pornography. Bondage, friends of mine, is not when I choose sober living. Bondage is when I've got to have something chemical to get by, to make it through, to have a good time, to feel normal. And the enemy sets it up in such a way that he makes bondage look like freedom and he makes freedom look like bondage. But the assurance of God's people is that if Christ sets you free, then guess what? You shall be free Indeed. Is there anybody on the line that's been liberated by the power of Christ? You've had Jesus cut the strings. You've seen Jesus sever the ties. You've seen Jesus loose you from the slavish bands of iniquity that once held you bound. And you've got liberty in Christ. I need you to know that your liberty is not in the drugstore. Your liberty is not in the liquor store. Your liberty is not in the cannabis store. Your liberty is in Jesus Christ. Are y'all hearing the word tonight? Then not only does the enemy watch this, saints, he is such a dirty dog. He is a dog, friends of mine. Not only is, does the Satan lead you into sin, then watch this. He, he is such a liar. He leads you to sin. Then he condemns you once you do sin. Revelation 12 and verse 10, he says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now have come salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ. For watch this. The accuser of our brethren is cast down who accuses them before God day and night. I need somebody to get this. See, I need you to understand that not only does Satan tempt you to sin, then what Satan does is he is the one that exposes you or pulls back the cover to make sure that your sin gets exposed. See, I need somebody to understand something fundamental about the relationship and the roles. See, I need you to understand that the one who accuses is not Christ. It is the devil. 
the one that inputs shame. It is not God. It is the adversary. The Bible literally refers to him as the accuser, the one that condemns, the one that says you've gone too far, the one that says you've messed up too much, the one that says you cannot be saved, the one that says you deserve hell, the one that says you messed up and you've done it now. I need you to know that is not the spirit of God. I need you to know it is the spirit of the accuser. It is the one that led you into sin, is the one that made sure that everybody sees your shame. And see, the problem is that some of us believe that we that we believe the lie where, where, where he mixed up the roles, where, where he's got us believing that Satan is the accusing prosecutor. But I need you to know that the prosecutor, the one that brings accusation, the one that makes the case for you to be declared guilty. I need you to know that that is not Jesus Christ, the one that brings the argument, the one that brings the case, the one that wants you to be sentenced, the one that wants you to suffer the fate that is the same as his. It is the enemy of our souls who is the devil. But that's why I love First John, First John chapter 2 and verse 1 that says, I write these things that no man sins, but if any man sins, he has an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. In other words, the one that stands up for us, the one that intercedes for us, the one that advocates for us, the one that wants to get a not guilty verdict, the one that advocates for the pardon. It is Jesus, our mediator. It is Jesus, our intercessor. It is Jesus, our advocate. It is Jesus that makes the case that says, no, I don't believe the prosecutor. No, I want you to side with the advocate. And see, this is why we ought not fear the judgment, friends of mine. It's because the judgment is in the favor of the saints. What do you mean, preacher? Why? Because the one who decides the case is related to the one who is our defense attorney. In other words, it is in our favor. So I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to be so scared. I don't have to have anxiety. I just got to make sure I've got the right attorney, Jesus, the righteous who has died and now intercedes and ever liveth to make intercession for our people or for his people. Are you hearing me tonight, saints? So then, friends of mine, how do we overcome the devil? Number one, you got to submit to God. You got to submit to God. The Bible says in James 4 and verse 7, you will not win by willpower. You will not win by human might. You will not win by being an intellectual. I need you to know that having degrees and having money, it does not raise your moral quality or strengthen you to stand against spiritual powers and wickedness. The Bible says, submit yourself. Therefore, unto God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. The Bible says, draw nigh unto God and he will draw near unto you. The second thing you got to do is you got to stand and live your life firmly planted on the word of God. The Bible says, put on the whole armor of God that you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and take on the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You see, friends of mine, I need you to know that the only way that Jesus overcame was he overcame by standing firmly planted on the word of God when he was tempted in the wilderness after 40 days of prayer and fasting. His constantly constant refrain to everything that was thrown his way is that he did not entertain temptation. He, he did not consider temptation. He did not rationalize temptation, but he constantly replied, it is written. And the word of God literally became a living force to beat back and push back all of the temptations of the enemy. And one of the things I want to encourage you to do is you got to learn how to stand firmly plant planted on the living word of God. I need you to know that the word of God is not a dead book. It is a living book with living properties and living powers and living principles that literally push back and put into remission all of the powers of the enemy of our souls. But the Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any double-edged sword. But more than that, friends of mine, we got to sober up. We got to sober up. The Bible says be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You need to wake up, friends of mine, and realize that you play in checkers. But I need you to know that the devil is playing chess. 
You playing for today, but the devil is playing for keeps. You playing and living for the weekend, but the devil is trying to get you to roll and gamble the dice with your eternal salvation. I need you to stop looking at the world with physical eyes. You need to look into the spiritual world and recognize that there is one that is seeking to take captive, take you captive. He is seeking to make you a slave. He is trying to keep you permanently separated from the power of God. But friends of mine, the most important thing, friends of mine, that if you're going to overcome the enemy, this is the key and this is the critical component. Component, Friends of mine, you got to switch sides. You got to change teams. Listen, I need you to understand, beloved, that, that, that even as we talk about going to heaven, friends of mine, I need you to understand this, beloved, that there, that, that there is going to be a hell. There is going to be a destruction of this earth. And everybody who is so attached to it, that they reject the offer of invita- offer of mercy. But I need you to understand something fundamentally about God is that God is in the saving business. He is not in the destroying business. The Bible says this in Ezekiel 33. He says, say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God. He says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked will turn from his way and live. And listen, Jesus pleads, And he is making this divine plea with somebody tonight. He says, turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will you die? I need you to know, beloved, that in this word tonight, I place before you life and death. I place before you curses and blessings. And I need you to know, beloved, that God has given us a divine invitation to the great gift of salvation so that your calling and election can be sure so that when the roll is called up yonder, both you and I and all that long for his glory appearing can be there. And this is why Jesus is giving this divine invitation. He's saying, why are you waiting? Arise, every one of you, and be baptized and wash away all of your sins. I need you to understand, friends of mine, the reason your day went like it went today. The reason you experienced all types of resistance. The reason somebody watching tonight felt an invisible pressure to keep you from pulling up this sermon on YouTube. You felt a resistance to going into that watch party. There was a resistance to going into the house of God. And I need you to know that that resistance, it was not just just fatigue. It was not just like I had a bad day. I need you to know that there was a literal spiritual war all around you. Satan, the enemy of your soul, trying to submit you where you are. And the great captain of the soul, Jesus Christ, trying to usher you and drive you and position you to receive eternal life. And God is saying to somebody tonight, he wants you to live a life of submission to him. He wants you to live in a constant state of dependence upon the word of God. He wants you to live on guard. But more than anything else, you've got to switch sides. you got to change teams. You've got to make a break, somebody tonight. You got to make a break with the kingdom of darkness and you got to make a decision to say, I'm going to walk and I'm going to stand on the Lord's side. And let me make this appeal to somebody tonight, because I need you to know the word of God is clear. God is saying this. He's saying, what are you waiting for? Why are you procrastinating? What else do you need to hear? What else do you need to see? Why are you halting between two opinions? He's saying, man, arise and be baptized and wash away all of your sins. I want to say to somebody who has never, ever been baptized, I want to say to that person that have strayed away from faith, I want to talk to that person that has been living, who's been attempting to live in a a spiritually neutral place. I need you to understand that there is no spiritually neutral place, either your own God side or your own Satan side. And if you've not been living passionately and committedly and intentionally, In service with your God, I need you to know simply by default, you've been siding and aligning yourself with the adversary of your soul, with the one who's accusing. You've been siding with the one who tempts you to do wrong, who tempts you away from Bible study, who draws you away from church, who draws you away from spiritual things. He is at the very same time making the case as to why you should not be saved. But I need you to not side with the prosecution. I need you to let the advocate, Jesus Christ, do his work in your life tonight. So I'm making the appeal tonight 
there is somebody who is watching this message tonight. I need you to know that you have been led to this revival, not by chance, not by luck, not by serendipity, but God's providential hand has led you here. He has been leading you not just into a religion or to ascribe to a, uh, a particular set of beliefs. He has been leading you into a saved relationship with Jesus Christ. And I need you to, to no longer be under the, the, the spell. God wants to loose you from the spell. He wants to loose you from Satan's portion. He wants to loose you from that which has held you hostage for so long because Satan has kept you because he's made bondage look like freedom. He's made freedom look like bondage. He has deceived you through your hurts to make you think God is against you. He's put his, he's put God's name on, Satan has put God's name on his work. And I need you to understand person who has lived a hard life and you've been wounded and that wounds have made you neglect faith in God. I need you to know that your value is not seen in your assets, but your value is seen in your attacks tonight. And there's somebody tonight that needs to make the decision to say, I'm going all the way with Jesus Christ this weekend, somewhere near you, somewhere in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, there's going to be a baptism. And if it is your desire tonight, it is your desire right now. Listen, friends of mine, let me pray. And I'm asking my prayer warriors to pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, would you call Satan's power, his spell, his hold, his tie, his string to somebody's heart, his chain to somebody's soul, the fetter around somebody's faith. May it be loose and broken right now in the name of Jesus. I want to appeal to you tonight. There's somebody right now. You need to text the word life to 404-737-0672. If you're in a church or in a watch party and you want to be baptized for the remission of your sins, maybe you need to start over again. Maybe you haven't submitted to God fully or, or maybe you were just never truly born again. Maybe you got wet before, but, but you never had that internal work, that never born again spirit experience in the heart. Maybe you had the expression, but you didn't have the relationship. But now that you want to have the relationship, you need to have a new expression. And you need to be rebaptized for the remission of all of your sins so that the outward experience now matches the inward experience. You want to text the word life to 404-737-0672 for the remission of all of your sins. And let me make some specific appeals because there's somebody who's man thinking about this. And you're saying, I'm wondering what my mom is going to say or my dad is going to say or what my man is going to say or, or what my friends are going to say or what my homies is going to say. See, this is one thing I need you to understand is that salvation, it is an individual decision. At some point, every person that is going to be saved in God's kingdom, every person that makes heaven their home, even if they join Christ with their family or if they join Christ with friends, at some point you have to step apart from the crowd and say, if mama don't go, I'm going. If husband don't go, I'm still going to go. If wife doesn't go, I'm still going to go. If, if, if my friends don't go, I'm still going to go. At some point, you've got to make a decision for heaven for yourself because I need you to know we're going to all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. But guess what? We don't, stand, we, don't, we don't appear there in groups. We stand there in the strength or the weakness, in the surplus or in the deficit of our own decision. So, friends of mine, if they can't get you into heaven, if they can't keep you out of heaven, you don't need their permission tonight. You need to make a decision for Jesus Christ yourself. I want to make this second appeal to somebody there in the city of Atlanta. There's somebody in Atlanta that needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, I need you to know I was in your city not long ago. I was staying in a hotel on Peachtree Street. And it's amazing as I, I watched, walked up and down Peachtree Street and saw cars come and go. The, I, the thing that, that broke my heart, there was a despair. There was an anguish in the hair. There was a hurt in the hair. You can, if, if you know how to hear it, you can hear the cry of help from the streets. And I could not help but weep silently in my soul as I realized that there are so many in the homeless community, some even with great affluence in high-rise buildings that needed what only Jesus Christ can provide. And there is somebody tonight in Atlanta that God is speaking to you in a very clear and direct way. And God is saying to you tonight, you need to make your calling and election sure. There's somebody there in the Queen City in Charlotte. There's somebody there sitting before a device or screen. 
There is somebody sitting at a watch party or church and the spirit of God is knocking your heart's door up and down. And he's saying today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. There's somebody in, 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 in Charlottesville. There is somebody in Charleston. There's somebody in Columbia. There's somebody in Hilton Head. There's somebody in Myrtle Beach. There is somebody and the spirit of God is speaking to you expressly saying today is the day. Listen, tonight there need to be at least 10, no, there need to be at least 25 people that text and say, in all these cities, across all these states, they say, I'm going to be baptized for the remission of my sins. There, there, there's, there's at least 25 to 30 saints somewhere, yea, even more, maybe 50, that need to say, tonight I make Jesus Christ my choice. And so I, I want to encourage my prayer warriors. And maybe there is a parent, you're, you're watching with your children. And your children have been saying, Mama, I, I think I want to be baptized. And right now, you need to be talking to them, saying, hey, listen, you, you don't need to come hard. You don't do, need to do a hard court press. But maybe there's somebody that needs to talk to a spouse. Maybe you're in a watch party with a friend. And you're in that watch party with a friend or in a church with a friend. You need to say, listen, 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 I, I have no judgment. I, I ain't trying to, to, to force nothing on you. But I want you to know, friend, my brother, sister, that tonight if you decide for Jesus, I want you to know I'll walk alongside you. I'll be a spiritual friend. I'll hold you down spiritually if you make a decision for Christ. And I want you to ask that question. Just make that simple invitation. Listen, you ain't got to try to be the Holy Spirit. Don't go beyond the scope of what God has asked you to do. Ask you to do. But maybe you need to ask a child. Maybe you need to ask a sibling. Maybe you just need, I, 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 I empower you. I deputize you spiritually in the name of Jesus Christ just to make this simple appeal to say, listen, if you begin to walk with Jesus, if you make it up in your mind to say, I want to be born again, I want to be baptized, I just want you to know I got your back. I'm going to walk alongside of you. And whatever I can do to facilitate your spiritual journey, I'm willing to do that right now in your house, right now in the watch party, right there in the church. I just need you to make that simple appeal. Listen, if you decide to walk with God, I'm willing to walk alongside of you. And I'm praying that a family of five a family of seven. I'm praying that a head of household, that a man, or maybe it's a single woman or father that is saying, listen, man, I need to get my whole family in the ark of safety. I need to get my family in the alignment with the will of God. I need to make sure that, that when this kingdom comes, that my house can be on the sea of glass when we go home. So right now, the spirit of God is speaking as the spirit of God is talking. Right now, you're appealing to say, I need to be baptized. Maybe there's some of us that need to get a fresh start. You need to be rebaptized. 404-737-0672. Listen, I, I know in my spirit that there are at least another 25, 35, 50 souls tonight across the Carolinas and throughout the state of Georgia that need to say yes. I need you to know that 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 God has allowed, uh, uh, God did not cause, but God has permitted uh, things like COVID and th you know things like the riot at the Capitol, but yet he's got four angels holding back the four, the winds of strife from the four corners of the earth. And you know why he's got them holding them back? He is waiting. He's holding back the winds until the people of God can be sealed and settled into the truth and make a decision for themselves. I need you to know he's holding it back, waiting on you. He's waiting on you. So friends of mine, as you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Say yes. And maybe you need Bible study. You need Bible study. You need to say, all right, I need to get cemented. I know there are at least 10 to 15 more that need to get in some Bible studies tonight. So, so if you need Bible study, 404-737-0672. But it's a decision night. Tonight, it is a decision night. Tonight, it is a decision night. Right now, somebody's name is getting written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. Right now, heaven is rejoicing because somewhere, somebody, even if you're not a church, you're, you ain't got nobody with you, but you're by yourself. And the spirit of God is speaking to you directly. You're texting baptism. You're texting for Bible studies. And right now, heaven is rejoicing. Names are being written in the Lamb's book of life. Sinful records are being expunged. Pardons are being granted. But you got to say yes. Right now, you got to make a decision. We will not be saved, friends of mine, by our good intentions. Like, oh, I just intend to one day. And one day, no, today. We will be saved as a result of the decision to receive the divine invitation, 
where the currency is faith and the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So would you receive the Lord tonight? Would you switch sides? Would you make it up in your mind and say, I'm going to be on the Lord's side. And if nobody else goes, comes, if nobody else goes, I'm still going to go. Father, tonight, Lord, I've given you all that I could give for this night. And I'm praying that your spirit would do an impressive work of liberating, of reviving, of spiritually bringing awakeness and awareness, wokeness to those that have been in darkness. So, Lord, I'm praying right now for families to come to Christ, for individuals to come to Christ, for friend groups to come to Christ, that tonight they will say, I will not side with the one who makes the case against me, but I side with Christ who makes the case for me. So, Lord, tonight I'm praying that you would submit every decision for Bible study, that, that you would seal every decision for baptism or rebaptism. I pray to God that you would seal it in a way that is permanent so that when our faith becomes sight and the invisible heaven becomes our daily reality, that all that have decided tonight and those that have decided in years gone by that we can stand on the sea of glass where affliction shall never, ever rise again. This, Lord, is our hope. This is our prayer. And my prayer is that even after the benediction is done and our service is completed, that you will continue to stir, that you will continue to revive, that you will continue to make your people spiritually woke so that by the end of this revival, that all that could possibly, all that are undecided, that they will be fully decided, all that are partly integrated will be in a fully integrated relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This Lord is our hope, our prayer, is our plea, and now it is our expectation. For we ask it all in the matchless and holy name of Jesus Christ. Let God's people say together, amen. And amen. God bless you. Listen, we out tomorrow night, but listen, don't miss Wednesday, Wellness Wednesday. It's Miracle Night Wednesday. So if you got anybody that's got sickness, uh, infirmity, listen, I got a word that's going to bless them, encourage them, strengthen them. They got blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, whatever it is. I got a word for them. This coming with psoriasis, whatever it is, we got a word mental, spiritually sick. Got a word for them on Wellness Wednesday. Then at the end, you're going to call to those prayer lines. The pastors, the preachers going to pray. They're going to pray down fire and healing over the people of God. Have a good break on tomorrow night, and we'll see you guys again on Wednesday night. My, 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 oh, my, wow. my, oh, oh my wow. Lord, what a powerful word of God from Pastor Deblier Snell. Listen, wow. I don't know about you, but there is somebody who uh, was watching tonight, Vic, and, and they just said, you know what? The word was so powerful. The Holy Spirit came into my home, came into my yeah. heart, came into my mind and convicted me to the point where I called the number to the point oh, where yes. I said, I'm calling 770-299-4900 for prayer. Somebody was so convicted that they texted the word life, right, for baptism. They texted right. 404 right. right. 737-0672. And Vic and I, we stand in agreement with you. As That's right. Pastor That's right. Snell said, we both. That Vic and I, we have pastors standing by that want to do life with you. It would That's be right. our That's honor right. to right. do life with you. It would be our, our honor yeah. to serve alongside you and be one of your pastors. Listen to me very carefully. If you feel so convicted, if you hear God's voice right now, don't harden your heart. Don't wait till tomorrow because tomorrow night we off. So you might as well do it tonight. Talk to him, Vic. Hey, man, it's incredible. Tonight was sobering. It was a spiritual awakening. Uh, you know, you know, th those messages that you hear sometimes that break you down, uh, that, that, that bring you to the point where you just feel exposed, where yeah. dust has been kicked up. Uh, it's, yeah. it's unsettling. Uh, but but in that unsettling place, you need to know that you need to have a bedrock in times like this. That's you, right. you, you, That's you, need, right. you need bedrock. And, and somebody has heard the message tonight and the dust has been kicked up. You've become unsettled. There's been an awakening that's happened. But our, we're, we're here to remind you. We're, we're here to tell you that the next step that needs to be made is to make Christ your choice. Right, right? To, to make Christ your choice. That's the only way that Job was able to stand. 
that his relationship was bedrock solid. Yeah. And that and that's that's the only way that you're going to you, you need to text. You, you need to text life. You need to text life to 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 uh, to for, for, for baptism to four oh four seven three seven three seven zero six seven two. There's someone that's saying, I, 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 I realize I need that bedrock solid relationship. I need to study. I, I, I need to get my mind right now. I've been exposed. It's, it's, it, the dust has been kicked up. I, I, I need to be settled now. And, you want to you want to go ahead. No, no. Yeah. You know what's crazy, Vic? There's somebody watching right now. I believe they're saying in their heart of hearts, you know what? All right. I, I accept Jesus. I, the, the preaching yeah. has been phenomenal. But why do I have to get baptized? We're here today to tell you that the only reason why you're getting baptized is because you're telling the world, you're telling Satan and his army, as we talked about tonight, you're telling your world, everybody in your circle of influence that you used to be one way, but now you're mm -hmm. going a whole mm -hmm. completely different way. As Pastor Snell said tonight, you're switching teams, right? And, switching and, it and up. The, the act of baptism is just simply saying to the world on the outside what has already taken place on the inside man you need to let your surroundings know that you now serve jesus christ oh without a doubt without a doubt and and, and there is the unparalleled spiritual work that god does yeah. when we trust and obey <laughs> like yeah. understanding only comes on the other side of obedience yeah uh, so, so, somebody needed that somebody needed that tonight somebody needed somebody. everything tonight man mm -hmm. and we, like yes, I said, we stand in agreement with you listen just That's before right. we jump off tonight vic we want to be men of our word and we want to give away some special prizes we have two special prizes that we want to give away tonight i see you all are clicking off but don't oh, yeah. click off just yet the blessing is in the benediction and the benediction <laughs> in this case is in the form of a 50 dollars gift card as well as That's another right. prize so listen don't click off just yet we want to uh acknowledge acknowledge the individual who was watching virtually with us from the furthest away. The person who was watching from the furthest away, go ahead, shout out your city right now. Shout out your city right now so we can uh, uh, um, um, acknowledge you and, and put you in the running for our prize. Now, watch this. It's a twofold thing. Not only should you shout out your city, but we need you to register register Gotta so you can get thing. the gift. All right. So make yeah. sure you register. Let's put the number up on the screen, team. Let's make sure you register so that you can be eligible to receive the prize tonight of $50 for text uh, 404 737 0672. We have somebody from Quebec, somebody in That's Virginia. Right. We see you, Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. That's right. All right, Savannah, Georgia, Huntsville, Alabama. We're going to give you 10 seconds because we're going to get off this broadcast. I know y'all ready to watch the Olympics. All right. <laughs> but make sure you <laughs> compete right now in the name That's of right. Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. All right. Here we Run go. Here this race run this I race <laughs> 10 seconds we down That's to right. six seconds right now all right let's go ahead and shout out your city we down to three we're down to two we are down to one i believe quebec wins it quebec. rosalind scott lewis Sister we lewis. celebrate with you oh, let's show you the lord all right pin court quebec rosalind you need to do us a favor if you want to win this prize tonight we That's need right. you to register all right and mm -hmm. complete the information in its entirety 404-737-0672 Two. We also want to give a book away tonight. Vic, who are we going to give that book to? Oh, man, I, I think someone that 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 has stayed with us. That's been the first time. First time we we, we, we shouted them out earlier. Uh, but if you've been here for the first time tonight, tonight was your first experience. We want you to put in the chat one more time. Me, the first person that just says me, you, you, you need you need that book tonight. The first person that responds with me. This is your first night and the almost home experience with us first time first time first time in the virtual yep. revival this experience is your first time worshiping with us tonight uh go ahead and type me in the comments oh, section. awesome that we have somebody that is zelma flood zelma all right we'll show you zelma now you were a little disobedient we asked you to type me but you she, said she, this she, is my first <laughs> so you're gonna win it's all good uh zelma we need you to do us a favor and register yeah. so that we can send you a, a special book entitled almost home that has some of the core tenets from this uh, uh powerful almost home revival in it all right text 404-737-0672 and we'll be uh, uh Pleased to ship out this book to you. Yo, it has been a full night, Vic. 
It has been a phenomenal night. Can you just, just seal that thing with go go ahead, Vic? Go go ahead. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. With prayer. I I, I want to yeah. shout out the, the McDonald family. We received a request, yes. and we just want them to know that that we have seen your request, that we are praying, interceding for your brother who's in the ICU. Even right now, he's on life support. Um, yeah. and, and 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 they just are in need of prayer. And so we are. Uh, we are not able to be at the physical location, but but we know that God's power is not limited by our locale. Uh, yeah. and, and and so we, we want to definitely uh, lift up the McDonald family tonight. Absolutely. Even as Vic, we close. Yeah. Well, Vic, do this, man. Can you give us a powerful 10 second prayer, man? Seal the decisions that were made Absolutely. tonight. Continue to pray for the McDonald family. And, Absolutely. And, and just for those who are remaining right here. I told you the blessing is in the benediction. Come on, give us a Absolutely. closing word. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's pray. Lord, you have shaken. You have caused us to be awakened and dust has been kicked up. But I pray that every reality that you have caused us to see, those that have made decisions for baptism, those that have made decisions for study, and those that realize they stand in the need of prayer, that you will continue to lead them into everlasting life. We intercede even now on the, uh, the McDonald family, and we know that you are present. So we ask that you will revive, that you will strengthen, and that you will reveal your power, even in that hospital room. We thank you and we ask that you will be with every person that has gathered tonight, that is re-watching this broadcast, that your power, that your liberating power may, be des may descend upon them and continue to set them free. We ask that you will bless and keep us until we are able to come back together, that you will walk with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks Amen. for tuning in, everybody. God bless you. We love you. We'll Blessings. see you on Wednesday. Until.